elements of people who work here during the day, people come for the maker space, people come for meetup groups. Uh, it's entirely nonprofit run, it's entirely nonprofit volunteer run. Um, one of the few places in the country where you can come and share ideas openly, freely. Um, the only thing you can be rate limited by is the Wi-Fi speed. So um, there's lots of opportunities here to share your ideas, to engage with people on all kinds of topics, whether technical, business, creative, um, tabletop games, whatever have you. Um, so if you'd like to come and give a talk at the Lightning Talks or at the dojo every Friday, uh, we'd love to have you. Um, whether you're a member here or you're from far away, or if you have any friends coming into town that talk about interesting things, um, we'd love to have them give a four to five minute talk at the dojo. Um, let's get started and introduce our lovely host, Sophie, and get the show on the road. Hey everybody, are we ready to have an awesome evening? Uh, to begin our awesomeness, before we start with our speakers, we have a samurai among us today. How many of us have seen Kill Bill? Two minutes. Now we all know about the Hattori Hanzo sword, right? Uh, that sword can cut God if you happen to meet God in one of your travels. Now we have a laser CNC printer and a lot of agnostics among us. So what we have is a wooden sword which was built at Hacker Dojo and he's going to show us some uh, of his uh, karate chops. Masa. Hi, I'm, my name is Masa. I'm a student from Japan. Um, I just made a sword, wooden sword, using razor uh, cutter uh, to, uh, last night. Uh, thanks to uh, the, one of the members, uh, we, uh, we made the sword by razor cutter and I I used a uh, cut uh, used knife and I uh, wrote kanji here so C C1 it's cool <laughs> yeah Yeah, uh, uh, I made this because it's a birthday of my friends of friends. <laughs> so I didn't, I haven't met him, <laughs> but I made it for him because the, I have the uh, same family name uh, with him. So the uh, character written in the sword is uh, name name uh, of of mine and him and mm -hmm. chopsticks okay so I have special skill <laughs> yeah actually I'm ninja because it's secret <laughs> don't don't see Japanese other other Japanese so. This is chopsticks. I bought this in US and a Japanese uh, Japanese store. It is very lightweight and never hurt people. It should never uh, so go around. It should never hurt something. But I have a skill. Like ninja. <coughs> this is cardboard. It's relatively hard. It's very hard. But I can throw this chopstick. Um, this 
his special skill. So don't think every Japanese can do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's my special skill. When I was uh, to, to uh, second grade in the university, um, I, I, this is, it was a period of uh, examination. So I, I created this sports while I'm studying. Uh, I'm, I'm tired, so let's throw a chopstick. Yeah, this is the, uh, my ninja-like ninja -like skill. So let's try again. For uh, most of us, when we are tired, we drink coffee. <laughs> uh, can you hold up flies with the, that uh, the chopsticks? Can you catch flies? If you if you succeed, uh, Mr. Miyagi would very much like to know how you do it. <laughs> Uh, our first speaker today is Ravi, if you could set up please. Uh, Ravi is an electrical engineer. Uh, no, he, he runs a company called ViewConf that lets users um, actually put their conference content online. Ravi, you have the con. Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Um, my name is Ravi Chityala. Uh, my name is a little bit hard to pronounce for some people, so I just made sure that uh, I put my name right there. And I'm the co-founder of this website called viewconf.com. And my partner in crime is Sri Devi Puripedi. She's right here. <clears throat> so the idea behind ViewConf is when you go to these conferences, there are so many tasks that happen. And it's impossible to be in every one of those talks because the reason you go to these conferences is to network with people and know them. Okay. So the plan for ViewConf is to actually go to these conferences and say, give me all your recorded contents. And we want to put it online so that other people can come and watch it. Okay. So that's, in essence, what ViewConf is all about. Uh, what is applicable to conferences is also applicable to meetups. Okay. Because there's a great meetups that happen in Hacker Dojo. Not everybody lives in Silicon Valley. They might be, let's say, living in uh, uh, Sacramento, for example. It's just impossible to be in this meetup. Um, but these meetups are being created for spreading the knowledge. So if these meetups actually record the, their presentations, they can put it on ViewConf, and then that information can be shared with uh, anybody in the world. You can choose to make the content private or public. So if you don't want the whole world to see, but only a few group of people should see it, then you can put the content privately and then say, send an email to all these people and only those people can actually come and access that content. That's also possible. Okay. Uh, so just to demonstrate, um, today, whatever I'm presenting now, I'm actually recording. So that's what I did just now. Okay. And it's actually very easy because QuickTime Player that comes with the latest version of Mac allows you to record the screen. Okay. Um, and I'm using a microphone right from my computer. So for a small meetup which is being held in one room, it should not be that difficult to get a screen grab and record the whole thing. So once I'm done recording this, I'll then upload it to ViewConf or I can upload it to YouTube and then embed it on ViewConf. Okay. So the next question is, what is the difference between this and YouTube? Okay, that's a natural question that people <coughs> ask because we are going to host videos, YouTube does it already, YouTube is a big powerful player, they have billions of dollars in revenue. What difference do you bring to the table? So just to demonstrate the difference, so here is a video um, from CPPCon, a C++ conference that was held in 2014. Um, and the talk is about the canonical classes. 
And when people discuss the video, they want to understand certain part of the video, they ask questions to other people. Okay. Uh, but when it comes to technical discussions or academic discussions, you tend to involve code snippets, equations, etc. But in YouTube, you can't do that. Um, here's an example of a, what is supposed to be an equation that looks something like this. Okay. It's just impossible for people to figure out whether this is actually an equation or it's just somebody randomly types some characters into a comment. Okay. For somebody who knows canonical classes will make some sense out of it, but it's still hard to read. Okay. So the same content we embedded on our website. So it's, this is still a YouTube video, but you are in the ViewConf domain. Okay. Same content. But if you look at the discussion, you can have things like code snippets that actually gets rendered in the way a code is supposed to be rendered. Oops, sorry. A code is supposed to be rendered. And we also have equations. So you can put equations as long as you use LaTeX. So equation will actually render just like a mathematical equation, not just random bunch of symbols. And then along with that, you can actually even put regular text. So the benefit of using a site like ViewConf would be um, if you are doing some technical meetup or a technical conference, YouTube limits you to the extent to which people can actually discuss things. Whereas with uh, ViewConf, you can actually put the content and people can discuss in the way they would naturally like to discuss code snippets and equations. Just like typing them and making them look like equations and code snippets. So that's the short version of uh, ViewConf. So, Oh yeah, um, sorry, thanks for pointing out. Um, along with this, you will also, every conference will have its own uh, landing page. For example, this is the landing page for the society, the CPPCon standard, uh, sorry, standard C++ foundation. And then any of the past conference, you will find a link to that here. You can click on it, and this is the landing page for that conference, okay? So the content is nicely organized. There is society and there is um, society and then there is conference. Under the conference comes all the content. Okay. So it's nicely organized so that it's easy to navigate. Um, along with that, you can bookmark your content, and all the bookmarks will be available here. Uh, if you're following any of the discussion, like you can take a particular content and say, any discussion that happens in this thing, I want to follow. Then um, all that list will be available in my follows. And every 24 hours, we will summarize all the content where there was discussion that you're following. And then we will send you an email. And this basically contains a list of all the conferences that you either have access to or you bookmarked that you want to watch and watch them later. Okay. So, thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, you are familiar with slide shape. Yes. As an example, there are a few others yes. which do similar. Yeah. And so, could you say how many users do you have? What is your distinguishing values compared to? So, um, SlideShares and many other websites, like YouTube is another example. Uh, oh, by the way, in this site, not only you can put videos, you can also put presentations and documents. Um, the difference is, with SlideShare and all that, the discussions tend to be only plain English. Uh, you can't put code snippets and equations. Okay. So we are gearing more towards people, letting them discuss in the way they imagine they want to discuss not force themselves into discussing offline. Like you don't want to put a, a, a gist.github URL in the comment telling people go to that URL and look at my code. Okay? Rather you can just put the code right here. So that's the that's benefit of the site. Yeah. Anything else? Cool. Thank you. Uh, as you all know the yes, and he's going to talk about the Apple Watch. But he's not going to be a second speaker. We are saving the Apple Watch for last. Uh, next up, we have Aaron, if you could set up, please. Um, Aaron is a professional gamer, or uh, used to be. He made his first million dollars playing professional games, and now he has his own gaming startup called XY Gaming. What XY Gaming does is it lets people play online games uh, for money, games like uh, the ones which you can play on consoles. Uh, Aaron is also Australian and um I'm <laughs> tall, handsome, good looking. What would the guy go say? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, this is gonna work. Um, 
Do you have a sign language guy? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. I didn't think of that. <laughs> 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 nice. Um, I won't load up in a presentation because it doesn't fit properly, so I'll just go through it. Hey. <laughs> it's a tune for Mac. Alright. <laughs> Alright guys, well, um, I'm Aaron from XY Gaming, so I'm one of the founders of the company, and it's an online platform that allows gamers to challenge each other for real cash in video games. So if you want to jump on there and wager $10, $20 for cash, you can jump on there and do that in current titles like League of Legends, Dota, StarCraft, and other big titles. Um, as Sophie mentioned, I was a professional gamer for about eight years, so that was where I initially earned my first million dollars. And now, and what I found out when I was doing it was that it was very hard for you to earn cash to play video games. I know I'm shocking, but it, it is very hard. And that's, that's mainly because there's several things in the market. So it's, it's a very fragmented market. So if I want to play one game, I have to go to a different website, to another website, as I want to change different games. And that was one of the big issues that I found as I played multiple titles. I had to have all these different accounts. The other big problem is, is that it's, it's, it's very, there's a very high amount of dispute. So if I'm playing against someone, I have to manually verify that I'm the winner. So this is a technology that we built, is automation around that. So if I want to play against someone currently, I have to manually enter the results. So if, if for instance, I'm playing against someone and they win 12-3, what happens is, is M being the winner has to enter in the results. And then me being the loser, I have to manually verify that result. And losers often lie. So what we did is we built an economic platform around these gamers to be able to allow them to play for cash. So we solved these problems by creating a completely automated disputes management system that verifies the results. So if you're playing instead on XY Gaming, you instead, you jump on, you play your game, you go play for cash, and now if you win, before you get from your couch back to the computer, we've already verified the results and paid the money into your account. This allows us to have multiple different games, as well as different styles of play on the side, including free games, as well as paid. So you can jump on there and play for free if you want to win a free Xbox, no problem. Um, so in short, we get gamers paid. Um, it's a huge market, most people don't know this, but gaming's huge, true story. There's currently 1.6 billion gamers in the world. What we're targeting is a sub of that market, which is about 205 million of them, that are playing professionally, or playing for cash, or spectating. So it's a, it, it is a huge market. And as an example, eSports has almost, it's, it's gaining more viewership than actual real sports is getting now. So for instance, the NBA Finals had 20, 26 million viewers, Whereas the League of Legends, one video game, had 32 million spectators for their finals live. So our team, you'll probably see us around here. I, I'm normally in the hive, but I do, do get around and do play a lot of table tennis, so you will see me around here. Um, my background is professional gamer, I was a designer, as well as I've been basically hacking consoles, hacking security servers for a very long time, and I was also casino management. Um, my co-founder, he'll be here actually very soon, and he used to build um, Virgin and Vodafone's scalable platforms. So as a full stack developer, we have X Price Waterhouse Coopers as our CFO. So and then we have another professional gamer who's founded some of the top organizations. So this is just a quick example of what it currently looks like. So where we're basically going to be outfitting and pushing this to to out there. I think we're looking at about two months before we launch. Um, so if you have any questions or anything, where we're currently looking for, we're about to close our first investment round, as well as. Um, Anyone in the gaming industry or anyone wants to chat about video games, let me know. I'm keen always to chat. That's pretty much it. Oh yeah, I need to mention too, it's completely legal what we're doing for cash. Before someone asks that question, as it's generally the first one, it's because it falls under the same, same law as if Tiger Woods goes to play golf, he puts down his 200k to go play. It's the same concept, so we're relating that except for we're doing it digitally. That's the only real difference. Um, any questions? No, no, banking's here in America. It's, it's all completely fine, no problem. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, that was a fantastic yeah. presentation, Aaron. What is your plan for promotion once you launch in a couple of um, What we're going to be doing is we'll be leveraging, initially we'll be leveling, leveraging both my networks as well as one of my co-founders. So we'll be able to get it out there to at least, we're looking at about 5 to 10 million people initially, which is organically through our networks. And then we'll be looking at building, um, once we get that out there, we'll be building our tournament system within four to six months of launching, which allows us to be able to onboard and do basically free promotions, as well as to work with these current small community sites to offer them a platform to do it all for them, all their games, all their tournaments and everything for free to onboard them. 
Yep. Uh, one of my video game companies was listed in the ASX yep. after the instructions came in. You know, we can talk about it, and are you looking at uh, getting funded from Australian side? Um, we're, we're getting funded both from Australians as well as from the US, so currently we have, it's about a 50-50 split for our current investors, so 50% of them from Australia, so we are definitely looking at that option. Okay. Uh, currently we have two major competitors in the industry, but as I said, they're using the manual verification technique to do the results, and they've actually already approached us to license our technology, so it's good for us. So instead, we're basically keeping it as a trade secret, because it works a lot better for us in that, that, that sense. Just as a pointer, you can apply the pattern and put it as a trade secret that will not be Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll definitely look into that. Um, what was the sorry? Is it a membership fee? Oh, no, it costs, costs no membership fee, so it's completely free for you to sign up. You can play for free, so we have a play currency as well as a real currency on there, as well as you can play for free products and other things on there as well. Um, what we do is, we the business model is we take a service fee off the top. So any cash games you play, we take anywhere from 10 to 15%. So it's just a straight service game. <coughs> what did you play for your first million? Um, the first game that I played was Counter-Strike. So that was the first one I played competitively for about four or five years. And then after that I moved to StarCraft. I moved to pretty much every MMO, uh, top five in the world for racing games. So jack of all trades. But yeah, I think Counter-Strike was the big one initially. Uh, the industry standard right now is 40%. Um, and we're going to be undercutting it initially straight at 13% because we're automating everything. So it's, it's already at 14, we're going to be going 13. And if you want to, what we've got built into the platform is like a social, social sort of media thing where you can push out, if you want to, when you create your challenge, you want to put it on social media, you get a discount. So we're giving them incentive to throw it on their social media and give it out there for free advertising for us. So can you briefly touch on how you interface with the console? Um, Okay. Yes and no, our technology. So from the user point of view, all the user has to do for, to get on board and, and for us to get access to their data is all they have to do is sign in on the website and add the game, which allows, all they have to do is log into their game account, that's it. So from the user point of view, it's very simple. From our point of view, there's a lot of technology in the back end to be able to do it, but we, we interface directly into the game, but I can't, can't really go into details. Yep, all good. Sweet. Good next. Um, I have a quick question for you. Is the website live? Uh, it isn't live just yet. We're doing closed beta testing. Okay. How, how do we get invites to the closed beta? Oh yeah, sign up. Uh, the page is up right now. Everyone, sign up. And um, we'll be inviting from that current list. So if you want some free stuff, definitely sign up. Yeah. So um, Aaron is part of the HF uh, co-op. He sits out of the hive. And I have this on reliable authority. He has GTA 5 uh, downloaded on his machine. <laughs> Next up, we have Ed, if you could set up, please. Oh, thank you, you preempted me. Uh, Ed is part of Sample Labs, and Sample Labs was a company uh, that was running the Red Bull survey. He's going to give us the survey results and tell us uh, what kind of Red Bulls we like. Okay, talk a little bit about Sample Labs also, please. Okay. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my name is Ed Chaudhry. I am the co founder and CEO of Sample Labs. I also have my co founder here, Emma. You guys probably know her. All right, quick survey. How many of you had the Red Bull that was in the fridge? Okay. How many of you had cases? Oh. <laughs> All right, cool. Just check it. At least you're honest. Let's go. So what we did, um, Red Bull came in. They were they are introducing four new flavors, five new flavors of of their line, and we wanted to poll, you know, the actual hacker JoJo people and ask them, well, what would you think of? The flavors. It was a quick two-tap survey. If you guys were interacting with it, you'll recognize it. Um, so that's what we do. There. We go. I don't know. It's going. Oh. Uh oh. I think this would be a good time to tell an elephant joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why did the elephant have a trunk? 
Because some cases are so last years and it was coming back from a vacation. Nice. <laughs> uh, what would happen if an elephant were to be inside a TARDIS? Inside a TARDIS. It would get stuck. Look up TARDIS. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, uh, stepping away from uh, Red Bull really quickly, just give you a background on what we do. Uh, Sample Labs, we provide CPG companies. What are CPG companies? Red Bull, Hershey's, PepsiCo, all those, you name it. Uh, we provide them the access to tools that'll give them the agile process that startups have today. So, it's all about quick iteration, right? And we're providing them those tools. Uh, we're using brand awareness as a new form of market research. So, while they're promoting new products to see if there's a soft launch and it's going well, we're capturing that point of impression, that data, and giving it right back to them live. So where did this come about? Uh, I was a tour manager for six years. I was doing laps around the US. Uh, this was one particular tour that I did for Lipton. Uh, it was a $2 million campaign. We did uh, 12 cities. We got out 500,000 samples, 25,000 likes on Facebook, 15,000 new followers on Twitter. That product is no longer available. This is a huge problem. It's actually worse than startups. It's a 95% failure rate. So, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, but you know, my thought here is that the aha moment was there's no consumer insight being captured at that moment of when people are trying those new products, like immediate feedback. You know, anecdotally, they'll say, hey, how's it going? You want to try this new product? Eh, it's too sweet for me, or it's kind of watered down. We weren't capturing that data, and that's what we were trying to do. So we're administering, we're getting out the samples. Uh, sometimes we're running the events. Uh, we're actually capturing the data and we have our software built for that. Uh, we analyze the data and we get to see the signals, those indicators of what's actually making the product fail or what's the driver to the product, the success of it. And then what we do is we provide action. You, know, you need actual insight on data. Data by itself is just nothing, it's useless. Um, so we're providing the action and telling them what cities to go to, what geographic, uh, demographic um, sectors to, to focus on, and then, or if they need to modify the product or just pull the product all together. So that's the insights that we're providing. And then, so this is basically how we do it. There's three methods in the way we're putting the product or the idea of the product into the ideas of consumers. One is uh, what you experienced, which was the iPad app. Um, right there, you, you're trying, you're going up to a, a Costco, hopefully, uh, we're talking to them. Uh, you're going to go up to a Costco app. Uh, demonstration, you're going to provide that quick feedback. It's only two points of uh, feedback, but when you have large data sets, it was only a five second survey. It's actually really interesting. You start to see when were your peak times of sampling, what was the busiest days, and what are the, you know, the actual factors that's making the product sell or not sell. And then uh, the consumer app, we're in process. That's phase two. Phase one is already out in our production. Phase two, we're actually, it's a pretty cool thing we're doing. Uh, if you guys remember the vending machine that was uh, by the hardware uh, space. Um, we're actually, it's in my garage now, we're hacking it away. And then what we're doing is we're gonna host it here, we're talking to some, uh, some cool brands, health conscious brands, just for you guys. Um, and we're gonna be providing free, free food, free products, in exchange for your feedback. So it's quick iteration, it's probably gonna be products you never tried before, and we want your feedback, we want you to know, uh, actually capture that mind share, that data, that we think about it. And we're gonna gamify it too, so you're gonna get points and we're gonna, make it a kind of a competition. So it's gonna be interesting, you guys are gonna check it out. And then um, here, here was the, the pilot that we were running uh, with Red Bull. There's other, another location called Magic across the street. And then we're about to um, place another cooler and iPad at 500 startups. We're gonna be uh, capturing that data uh, about, and capturing and seeing what was the actual feedback from the new, you know, the tropical, the, what was it? Blueberry, wild cherry, and cranberry. Cool. And let's just go to the dashboard really quickly. Cool, so what did the dojo think? It's geolocated, so every time there's a vote it comes in. That's how we can compare different events across the, across the country. So this is not the 100% capture. Thank you for everyone who did provide that feedback. Every single time you touch that iPad, thank you very much. 
Um, but here's the sentiment. Out of 583 votes, 487 liked, 96 disliked. If we wanted to zoom in really quickly just to see what you guys didn't like, if we were to bring this back, we're now bringing back Blueberry. So you guys do not like Blueberry. <laughs> what did you do like? Let's see. The favorite, oh, by, and my favorite too is Tropical. Yeah. Cool, and the busiest times? Uh, looks around 2 to 3 o'clock, Fridays, no surprise. So yeah, uh, any questions? Are you contacted by the companies to do it? Are you just doing and push the information? Oh, no, we're, yeah, there's, there's negotiations to take this further and expand it further. So there you are on a mandate with from them? No, well, not a mandate, but it's a conversation that we're having and we're growing this relationship there. They're uh, socializing and not with their teams. And there's other, th this is just one instance. We're working with small manufacturers, large manufacturers to just get that out there. Cool. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Uh, next up, we have Ben. If you could set up, please. Uh, ben is our, our resident Apple Watch expert, and the popular Hacker Dojo myth is Ben knew about the Apple Watch way before Apple did. <laughs> Uh, what we also have is a presenter set, which we hacked, actually Ben hacked and um, Carlos hacked, I think, yesterday. Yes. Uh, Carlos also helped with the laser CNC, so if you want uh, wood things to be cut and shaped, he's your man. Uh, so yeah, this is our, this is our uh, plastic, new screws, 500 an hour. <laughs> and Carlos back there in the hat. Where you can't Carlos, if you want to No, I don't want to. Is that how you cut that? Walmart has it for 20 bucks. <laughs> Can you give me my watch sooner than it's supposed to get here? Do you have any no, ends? Unfortunately, I'm still waiting on mine. Thank you, Mustafa, for lending me his watch today. But yeah, mine's not supposed to be here until May. While Ben is setting up, we have drawn so far if you could quickly come up. Uh, John Sokol was lighting an electric bulb in his mouth and we thought it would be a cool show. Okay, thank you, John. Mustafa, is watch already? So, um, this is the Apple Watch, as you all know, and um, so I run the Apple Watch Meetup group around here, and um, so we have lots of events coming up. Uh, since last May, we've grown all the way up to over a thousand members. Um, we're a collection of designers and developers, so I'd say every other event uh, we have design, uh, and then every other one we do code. Uh, so we learned both uh, how to code in Swift, and we've learned how to use things like origami um, from Facebook for making animations, and also After Effects and uh, Sketch to design interfaces. And uh, so this Tuesday we're going to have a really big event um, in the large event room, April 28th, and then uh, May 26th we'll have 10 uh, real apps that are in the App Store demoing. And then on June 13th we'll have another big hackathon um, up in the city uh, after WWDC. So uh, the last hackathon we had here and 33 teams presented their apps and so I'm really looking forward to that. If you're at all interested in Apple Watch development, you should definitely come to it. And that's the URL, so just meetup.com slash apple dash watch, or if you just search for Apple Watch Meetup, then you will go to it. And now, without further ado, I will show some stuff on the watch. So, if you're curious about how I'm doing this, um, QuickTime has a feature where 
I can make a movie recording from my iPhone. I just switch to the iPhone. Oh. Of course it doesn't work because it's a demo. There we go. And so now I've got my iPhone there and I wrote an app so that you don't see all of the camera interface on the sides. Um, but in here we have the Apple Watch. Yes, very nice. Jellyfish. So Apple actually, um, they, they took real pictures. So this isn't animated. They took real pictures of a jellyfish and real pictures of a butterfly to um, make it do those things. And so let me get my notes. Uh, can you hand me those? Yeah. Okay, so on the home screen, you can swipe down for notifications. Uh, right now, I don't have any. Um, but we can also um, swipe up to get glances. And so that's where you can see stuff like your uh, battery power, and you can look at your heart rate if you want. Um, see what your current playing music is. And so glances are just um, little uh, snapshots of your apps. It's just the data. And if you press on any, um, any of them, then it takes you directly to the app. So we'll press on this activity one, and it'll take me to the big activity app where I can, um, I can swipe to, come on, to see how many calories I've burned and how long I've worked out today. So. Um, then we have the digital crown, which is the dial on the side, and uh, that is basically like your home button. So when you press it, you get to see all the apps on the home screen. And um, when you press it again, then it will go back to the clock, and press it again, then it goes back to the face like that. Question? No? Okay. And then uh, we can hold it down and use Siri. Open activity. Open. Open activity. So um, what I'm trying to do there is open up the activity app with Siri. And the reason why is because sometimes it can be hard to find the app you're looking for on the home screen. Because it's a demo, it's not going to work. But that's OK. It's <laughs> just Siri, yeah. Um, and so uh, then there's also force touch. So to show you that, if I'm on this clock face here, and if I just like long press, nothing happens. But if I press down hard, then I get to choose which um, which different faces that I want to have. So uh, let's say I want the Mickey face. So now I've got Mickey, and um, oh, can you see it? I can't. Oh, yeah, you guys. <laughs> There we go. Okay. So now I've got Mickey, and you can customize the different features of it by doing that. You can get different, uh, they call them complications. So we'll accept that one. So now we can see the uh, sunset time there on the bottom. And then uh, if I press the second button here, um, then it shows me all of my favorite friends. And so I can go between them like that, and if I select one, oh, not Siri, one. If I select one, this is my brother, then I can uh, call and text message him. And if he had an Apple Watch, then I'd be able to do the fancy stuff like uh, draw him a picture, share my heartbeat with him, or tap him on the wrist. Um, and then if I double click that same button, so I'm going to double click that now then it brings up your Apple Pay. So if you're in a store, then you can kind of quickly uh, pay for something without having to pull out your phone or your credit card. And then if I hold that same button, then that's how you can power off the phone or put it in power reserve mode. Power reserve mode is this new feature for the watch that um, basically just shows you the time and won't let you use any of the apps. Um, so that can be handy if it's running out of power, but you uh, want to have it for the rest of the day. Is that 18 hours, like they say? Not sure yet. Still trying to figure that out. 
And then, uh, so if I double tap on the digital crown, then I can switch back and forth between apps that I had open. Can you play like games that. for it? Yes, there are games for it. Um, a lot of them are kind of turn-based or memory matching games right now. Um, but uh, in the future, we'll be able to have even more fancy stuff. Right now, the way apps work is that all the apps run on the phone and uh, it's communicated to the watch via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Um, so in the future, eventually we'll be able to actually install apps on the watch and then we can do things like fancier games. And uh, using the motion data and using a digital crown because right now we can't do any of that with the current SDK. Um, and then one more feature is that you can cover the watch and it'll turn off and you can be back at the uh, watch screen. So. That's my intro to the Apple Watch, and I'd love to have you guys come out to the meetup group and we'll learn how to develop. Um, when on the event on Tuesday, I'm going to showcase all the different features that are different on the hardware than they are in the simulator. Just a quick question. It looks like the watch is nothing more than a peripheral for an iPhone. Yeah, and in fact, I mean, that's, that's kind of how they thought about it when they were making it. Um, they wanted you to be able to not pull your phone out of your pocket as often and be more present in the moment. So, um, I mean, time will tell. I mean, you can go and play with the Apple Store and see if it's useful to you, but I think it's going to be useful for a lot of people. Oh, yes, that would happen. Yes, that's true. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so this is the sport model, and so the case of it is aluminum, and it's got a glass. If you pay $200 more, then you get a steel enclosure and a sapphire display, and if you don't know what sapphire is, um, it's harder than glass, and you know even if you run sandpaper across it, it won't scratch at all. And so that's what the high-end like Rolex watches are made with that on their glass. Cool. Thank you guys for letting me know. Thank you, Ben. Uh, if you could set up, please, Francisco. Now, we are trying something new today. Uh, our speakers were Ravi, uh, Aaron, Ben, and Ed. Uh, we now have an app that will let us uh, rank those speakers, like did we like their presentations, how much did we like them, and provide feedback. We'll see how this ranking system goes for the first day. And then let's see. Uh, the reason why we're doing is uh, we have had a lot of the speakers saying they want to get feedback because they are pitching to investors. And we also want to see from the supplies and the demand side, you know, what kind of speakers our uh, audience likes. So Francisco runs a company called uh, RankTab. He, he's from Mexico and he also sits at the Hive and is part of the HF Co-op. Francisco, if you could quickly tell us what we should do. Sure, thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Francisco. Um, RankTap is actually um, an idea based on helping people make group decisions together. And you know how complicated it is to evaluate options and get everyone's consensus, and not just have a, an average of everyone's vote, but actually uh, recalculate based on the sample size and other factors that make the decision more intelligent. So, uh, very quickly, how it works is you just go to a short URL or scan the QR code, and you'll see the names of the options. You can just very easily, with a slider, um, give your, uh, your 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 grading. And then, if you want to, you can also have a like an anonymous little comment that uh, everyone will be able to see. And you can see it from any device: uh, web, iPhone, Android. It's also available as an app for iOS. Um, but you can you don't have to download anyone anything. If you just go directly to the URL, and you can provide like. Today we can see like who did you guys as a group, um, which presentation you like best. That's basically what it is, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. And but also, uh, Ragtop is also being used a lot in, um, for, for instance, pitching competitions, startup events, and in companies it's used for deciding, you know, qualifying candidates for job positions in live scenarios, and also for um, um, for. Uh, getting polling from citizens and government initiatives. Alright? Thank you, Francisco. Before we wrap this evening up, uh, we have Sokol, if you could turn. So, he's lighting a light bulb 
wirelessly. The video of this and how to build this was floating around Facebook and uh, so I built this real quick just to show my kids the, the basic principle of a Tesla coil. So the original circuit at one transistor I doubled them up just to get a little more current, a couple more turns. Um, and so I can kind of show you the Uncle Fester move. <laughs> so if anyone wants to look at it, I'll have to do it. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody, uh, for a lovely evening. Uh, go on and have a lovely weekend and uh, enjoy yourselves. Live long and prosper, people. Take care. Go for it. Go for it. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to remind everyone uh, that tomorrow night at 6 p.m. we're going to have uh, Silicon Valley Inventors. We're going to have a demo night. So if you have something or you want to see what other inventors are making in the area, come out. We're also going to have a product dev panel uh, if you have any questions. It's in the large event room and you can find us on meetup.com uh, under Silicon Valley Inventors.